Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. Today, as always, I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Anyhow, onto the topic of the video. Boom, there they are. Classic telescope eyepieces. So, you know, I kind of wanted to make this video real quick. I have these guys set up. I'm selling a few of my eyepieces. I just kind of have too many right now. Um, just in case, you know, you kind of run across them, you know, you're thinking about them, you know, you're wondering why the heck somebody would still use, you know, classic telescope eyepieces. Um, and then also, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're not going to be buying them new, right? I mean, most of these aren't really made anymore. You know, some of the things to look for if you're, you know, if you're kind of finding them used. But anyhow, so the first uh, um, eyepieces that we have on the table here are called the Kellner eyepieces. Uh, Kellner, basically uh, three lens design. Um, and then the uh, field of view wise, they're from about 35 degrees to 50 degrees. Um, <clears throat> So these eyepieces, you know, if you've got a slower scope, let's like, let's say an F10 or, you know, slower. So that'd probably be an SCT or a Mac. Uh, these can be sharp eyepieces. I personally don't have too much experience with, uh, you know, observing with them. Um, uh, I just kind of prefer other eyepiece designs. I really feel pretty tight usually on Kellners. Uh, so those guys, um, the eyepiece shape on most of these, as you can see on the Kellners, I mean, uh, they're, they're kind of a volcano top is what they're called. So it's kind of, you know, essentially uh, slanted down. So yeah, this is what I'm kind of talking about. So it's the actual shape of the eyepiece. So this is called a volcano top eyepiece design. Uh, now, a lot of the older eyepieces, that is one thing that I do like about them is that, the, you know, like if you watch my channel, you know, I'm not really a fan of eye, cu or of eye guards, you know, the eye cups or whatever. And this allows you to get your eyeball really, really close to the glass. And, you know, basically, since it's kind of tapered down like this, you know, your face is not hitting the eyepiece. So that is one thing that I really, really enjoy about classic eyepieces is that they are shaped like this. Even with the tighter eye relief, right, it doesn't matter as much because you could just get closer to the eyepiece. All right, so Kellner, so these guys... Um, Next up, we've got the RKEs. Oh yeah. All right, so RKEs, these are uh, actually, they're called a reverse calendar design. So there's still a three uh, lens arrangement on these guys. And uh, one thing that I will uh, mention about these, if you have never used this one, the 28 millimeter RKE, and we'll actually come back to this one as far as looking for, you know, condition type of things on these eyepieces, but, um, Okay, so if you've never used uh, the 28 millimeter RK, this thing is pretty crazy. The first time you looked at one of these. Uh, so this is, it's called the floating in space eyepiece effect. Um, there's a couple of things that, that like make this eyepiece really special. Okay, so I, I'm not really sure, you know, kind of like how to describe it, but basically, when you look through this eyepiece, right, especially if you're, you know, kind of like in a darker environment, like it's weird because it almost looks like you're looking at a holograph. That's the best way that I'd describe it. I mean, the eyepiece essentially totally disappears and all you see is the view. Um, I, I mean, a couple of things, you know, from what I read in my personal experience, um, they kind of, you know, contribute to, you know, that kind of effect with this eyepiece. First of all, again, it's a volcano top, right? So, you know, it's kind of, kind of got that tapered, you know, edge. Also the body, you know, like if I point it like this, right, you see how like narrow the body is on this? Um, so that kind of helps with that. And also the, this thing actually does have pretty long eye relief. So anyway, that all kind of constitutes to a really cool effect. Like it, it's a very special view with this eyepiece. Um, so these are, you know, kind of an narrow field of view. I believe these are 45 degrees, but uh, the really cool effect with this is, you know, it's really nice. If you've never experienced it, uh, if you, you know, if you want to just try out a classic eyepiece, you know, that's not very expensive, I think. Uh, you can actually still buy these brand new too, but um, I think used, they sell for, um, I don't know, like 50, 60 bucks, so not expensive. Uh, so yeah, this is one eyepiece that I highly recommend if you wanna try, you know, classic eyepieces. And then just a quick aside, look at that, it's sunrise. Yes, I'm up bright and early today, I have kids. <laughs> 
Uh, but anyway, so go, going back to the eyepieces. All right, so a couple more keys. You know, um, so the effect that I was talking about, it's really pronounced with this one. The other ones, they're not bad eyepieces. I actually use them sometimes in planetary, even observing. Uh, but you don't really get that effect, so I don't really find these too special. Um, not to say that they're bad eyepieces, but the 28 is the one that you really want uh, in the uh, our keys. All right, so moving on to the orthos. So orthos, um, basically these are actually really relevant, really cool eyepieces still these days. Uh, they're also uh, usually a four element design. Um, also will have very tight eye relief, I'd say on anything that's 10 millimeters or below. I mean, your eyeball, like let's say with the six uh, millimeter parks here, I mean, it's literally glued to the eyepiece. I mean, your eye is gonna be, you know, like very close to it. So definitely not for eyeglass wearers. Uh, the reason that I say they're very relevant these days is because um, they are just, I mean, for the money, I mean, you could get these for like 40, 50 bucks used easily uh you're getting very very sharp glass okay so if you're into planetary into double stars and you do not care about the eye relief as much these are awesome 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 optically performing eyepieces uh there's kind of a you know like a renaissance going on with these people are kind of rediscovering them <laughs> uh because um yeah, I mean, they're just sharp. There's nothing wrong with, you know, the, these guys. All right, so Orthos, 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 same thing. You know, just a couple of different brands with them, like four millimeter. Um, very tight eye relief with this guy. You know, I've used it on the planets. Um, I'd say, like, for me personally, going below uh, six millimeters with Orthos, uh, it's just not very comfortable to view, honestly. So I, you know... Some people, you know, do it. I personally enjoy staying really, you know, six is probably the lowest that I'd go personally. After that, I would, you know, I'd tend to switch to the newer eyepiece designs that have longer eye relief. And again, I do not wear eyeglasses too. All right, so this is an older uh, Edmund Zoom. Uh, these are actually kind of cool. You know, I've had one of these before. Uh, pretty decent views with the uh, it's not really comparable to the newer zooms, honestly. I still prefer the newer zooms. Um, so yeah, so a bunch of more orthos. Uh, a couple of eyepieces, these are not even like labeled. Uh, so sometimes you'll run into the, um, you know, like this thing right here. I have no idea what this is. Um, I, you know, I posted all these up for sale and I had a gent that wanted it. So I guess he knows what it is, you know. So yeah, it's, you know, it's a cool, like all metal eyepiece, but I, you know, the, it's not labeled as far as the millimeters or the make or anything. Uh, so sometimes you'll run into that. Uh, and then we get to the newer stuff. Well, okay, so plastics aren't really newer, but, uh, you know, typically people switch from all of these to plossils and in particular Teleview kind of kind of the spoiler of all the of the of the uh, classic you know eyepiece design party right their plossils are excellent so plossils they're typically a four element design at least i mean there there's a you know quite a few different eyepieces that are called plossils but uh the original design is two basically doublets you know that would kind of work together but you know they do have higher element designs i think like the mid super plossils used five elements um so anyhow yeah but th this is actually one of the older ones still volcano you know style the, the newer ones they kind of started to use eye cups uh if you can find these televues in the volcano design again uh especially i mean the higher millimeters doesn't really matter but with the lower millimeter ones the volcanoes are cool because again you could get your eye closer and the eye relief is pretty tight in them field of view wise on plossils is typically right around 50 degrees um and then here we have the Celestron Ultima hanging out. It's also basically a plausible type of design. These older Ultimas, awesome, awesome eyepieces. All right, so now, let's see, where is it? Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys. This is also why I wanted to make this video because I actually have one right now. Boom. This is what ruined it all. <laughs> 
the Telavia Naglair 13 millimeter. So um, this thing is actually the original one in the original green box. This is what they used to look like. This is the eyepiece that came out that kind of you know, essentially more or less, you know, started to make all of these obsolete. Again, there's kind of a resurgence going on with some of these designs. Uh, but the wide field eyepieces is what really kind of, you know, changed, you know, basically people's, you know, observing preference. So, I mean, check this thing out, man. Oop, trying to do this one handed kind of hard. <laughs> All right, so this thing came out, right? Um, 82 degree field of view. I mean, you know, size wise, I mean, look at the size comparison. You know, matter of fact, here's the 13 millimeter plus, right? That Telavi makes. Same generation. I mean, look at the size difference. Boom. I've said this in past videos. I'll kind of say it again just real quick. This is a much more expensive eyepiece, a much heavier eyepiece. Is the does this show you more as far as like contrast, clarity, sharpness compared to this 13 millimeter plossel? No, it does not. The biggest difference, the revolution, wasn't that you know it showed you more colors, more contrast, or whatever. The biggest difference was that it's just wider. Okay, so it's 82 degrees versus 50 degrees. All right, so I won't digress too much into that, but this is the eyepiece that came out. This is the original, you know, Nagler that they released. Um, that kind of essentially more or less made the rest of these obsolete, you know, per se. All right, so looking at condition of these, you know, what kind of stuff should you look for? Well, you know, like when you look at the lens, you know, of these, you know, you don't want like any scratches or anything like that. Most of these are going to have some dust, you, you know, hopefully you don't want dust in between the elements. So, you know, kind of look for that. I mean, if it's on the top, that's easy to clean off. Uh, I mean, these, you know, like some of these eyepieces, I mean, they're like 40, 50 years old. So uh, chances are you're not going to get these perfect. Although, you know, you can, like this parks right here. I mean, this thing is absolutely mint. Okay, there's, I mean, it's hardly used. All right, a couple of other things to kind of look for. Um, this is actually kind of a weird thing. So check that out. You see that? What I'm talking about is that little spot right there. I don't know if these are even coated or not. I think they are. Uh, so it's kind of like an uh, like an unevenness in the coating. So, you know, check that out. And actually, this particular one kind of has some haze going on on the glass. Um, and then this is actually on the internal surface uh, of the this front lens. So that's, you know, one thing to kind of check out. Um, with older eyepieces too, they can have mold uh, in between like the elements too, so look for that. And if you're not sure what that'll look like, kind of looks like the spot, but it'll be like grayer and, you know, kind of like almost has like little filaments going out of it. So if you see that, you know, that's one thing that you probably want to stay away from. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys found a little overview of classic eyepieces, you know, entertaining. Um, I would say, you know, if you haven't tried them out and you kind of come across them, you know, for a decent buy, um, don't, don't like, you know, hesitate that, you know, since they don't have like the, you know, like big, you know, hyper wide field of views or the really long eye relief, I'd say try them out. You know, you'd be surprised at how, you know, good of views uh, some of these will provide for you. So now if you guys have any questions, comments or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.